Okay, in this video we're going to be talking about proofs. Now a little bit later in the course we're going to be doing some geometric proofs, proofs involving geometric figures, but in this video we're going to be doing something called algebra proofs, which just means uh, solving algebraic equations in a particular uh, kind of formal method to learn about how proofs are done using what's called a two-column format. So take a look at example number one. We have this conditional statement if 2x plus 3 equals 15, then x equals 6. So this is a conditional statement. It's an if-then form, and I can label my hypothesis and my conclusion here. And this conditional statement is in, it's a little bit different than the conditional statements we've been looking at before because this just looks kind of like the beginning of what we would call an algebraic equation, and this just looks like the solution to the equation, and that's essentially what it is. When writing an algebra proof, the hypothesis is what is given. And we're going to talk about this in just a minute. The hypothesis is what is given. So 2x plus 3 equals 15, this is the given part of our proof. And the conclusion is what you are to prove. All right, so the format of a typical proof, you have a given piece and you have a proved piece, and they match up to the hypothesis and the conclusion of a conditional statement. Now, something that I want to note here about algebraic proofs, for this particular equation right here, 2x plus 3 equals 15. Now, if we were just going to solve this equation in the normal way, it wouldn't be that difficult. It would look something like this. We'd subtract 3 from both sides, and that would give me 2x equals 15 minus 3 is 12. And then I would divide both sides by 2, and that would give me x equals 6. And then I'd be done. And that's essentially what we're going to be doing when we do algebra proofs, except instead of you know kind of marking through here and drawing the line and then drawing the lines each individual step that we do in the proof is going to have its own line so we're going to be writing down individual lines and as we do each step in the proof as we do each step solving the equation we're going to state and write down a reason for each one of our steps so let's take a look at how that's going to look so here's our equation that we started with and notice it says given 2x plus 3 equals 15, prove x equals 6. All right, so here's what a two-column proof would look like for this particular problem. A two-column proof, there's this little, what's called a t-chart that we draw right here. And one column we label statements, and the other column we label reasons. And we start out with step number one. And step number one is always the given part of your proof. Sometimes you have more than one given statement. In this case, we just have one. So we're going to start with that. 2x plus 3 equals 15. And the reason that we start with that, the reason that we have that statement is because it's given. All right. So step number two. Step number two, remember from solving it before, we're going to subtract 3 from both sides of the equation. Well, instead of doing it like I did before, which was, you know, write down the negative 3 here and then draw a line and then write, I'm going to write a whole separate line here in which I subtract 3 from each side of the equation. So 2x plus 3 minus 3 equals 15 minus 3. So what I've just done is subtracted 3 from both sides and I've written it on a single line in my proof. Now, the reason that I can subtract 3 from each side of my equation is there's something that we talked about just recently called the subtraction property of equality. The subtraction property of equality says if I have two things that are equal to each other, like 2x plus 3 and 15, then I can subtract the same thing from each one of those quantities. And that's what I've done right here. So this, subtract 3 from this side, subtract 3 from this side, that's just a subtraction property of equality. Each one of our reasons here is going to be one of our properties of equality. So my next 
statement here. I'm going to do what normally I would call collecting like terms. My positive 3 and my negative 3 kind of cancel each other out, and my 15 minus 3, I combine those into 12. But collecting like terms is not one of the reasons that I use. And the reason that I'm going to be using here is actually going to be the substitution property of equality. And what I'm substituting is positive 3 and negative 3, I'm going to substitute 0 for that value right there. So 2x plus 0, if you want to think of it that way. 15 minus 3, I'm going to substitute for 15 minus 3, I'm going to substitute the quantity 12. And I have 2x equals 12. And the reason I can write that is because I've substituted 0 for this quantity and 12 for that quantity. Now my fourth step, I want to divide both sides of my equation by 2. And rather than, again, rather than just do it right here on this line here, I'm going to give it its own line. So 2x divided by 2 equals 12 divided by 2. The reason this is my division property of equality. And now, finally, my last step, my 2's are going to cancel out here, which gives me x. 12 divided by 2 is 6. And this one, it may be difficult for you to see, at least for right now, but again, what I'm doing here is I am using my substitution property of equality. And for 2 divided by 2, I'm going to substitute 1. So this 2 divided by 2 becomes 1, if you want to put the 1 there. And this 12 divided by 2, I'm going to substitute 12 divided by 2, I'm going to substitute 6 for 12 divided by 2. So that's going to be my substitution property of equality. And we've just done our first algebra proof.